Greetings, I'm Chris. I'm a senior associate at KNS Legal. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am Carol. I'm a senior associate at KNS Legal as well. Please have a seat. Have some water for you. Yes. Hope you're doing well considering it's really cold out there. Before we begin, could you please introduce yourself by telling us your name and what you would want us to refer to you as? My name is Prerna Chaudhary and you can refer to me as Prerna. All right, Prerna. Um, before we begin with today's session, just to give you a short introduction about our firm, KNS Legal has been extensively dealing in various areas of law and we do have a strong hold in environmental law as well. So the firm has been in business for over two de decades and as attorneys, we've been practicing for over a decade. So be rest assured that we are here to provide you best in class service and assist you in making an informed choice as possible. And we will try to accommodate all your needs and interests as you will express throughout the course of today's session. So safe to conclude, you are in safe hands. Please feel comfortable in today's session. And that being said, uh, the reason both of us are assisting you today is that just in case at any point one of us is not present, you have another attorney that's equally familiar with your case. And you will see us referring to any notes at any point of time in the session. That's because we did receive a secretarial note from our legal team beforehand. So that allowed us to do a few uh, basic preliminary research and, you know, understand your problem much better in today's session. Um, that being said, Chris, if you could explain. Right. So, uh, Prerna, is this the first time you're visiting a law firm? Yeah. Great. Then it would be better if I explain certain basic details about today's session first and then we go ahead with the session. Right. So the first and the most primary aspect of this session is that it is entirely confidential in nature. We shall be taking notes of the meeting for our record. However, that shall remain under lock and key. Since this is a client-centric discussion, you are entirely in control of the information you want to communicate to us. However, we would want you to be as open about your problem as it may be possible. Since this essentially is a collaborative effort to ensure that we reach an amenable solution for your problem. We shall also be signing a non-disclosure agreement. It already has our signatures. What it would do is, whenever you communicate anything to us, it would ensure that this information isn't shared with a third party unless you give us your explicit consent to do so. And there's a certain exception to it. Through the course of this discussion, if at all we gauge that the party is info could possibly commit a criminal act, we shall have to inform the same to the relevant authorities. However, I'm pretty certain we won't reach that point. Secondly, the session would be of 25 minutes, which would first begin with you briefing us about your problem. Thereafter, we shall be asking certain questions to you relevant to the issue. And thirdly, um, regarding the fee structure, the firm's first session, the session we're having today, is entirely free of cost. That is our firm's policy. Post this session, if at all you wish to continue our services, we shall be giving you a retainer agreement after the session concludes. You can deliberate upon how the session went on for you and then decide if you wish to sign it. Thereafter, our secretary, Ms. Tracy, shall give you the fee schedule for the same. If at all this is a situation involving a financial crunch, we also take up cases pro bono to ensure that our goodwill has maintained, thereby establishing the fact that money is always of secondary concern to us. Lastly, as a matter of policy, we tend to avoid conflict of interest. What I mean by that is, if at all you are seeking relief against one of our pre-existing clients, we shall have to end this session and thereafter we shall recommend your case to other attorneys if at all you would want us to do that. That being said, Carol? Um, yes. Also, we have kept a notepad for you, just in case you want to write down anything throughout this session, you may jot it down. Uh, do you have any questions regarding what we just explained? I will click. Are we Mr. Clear? Great. Uh, just a reminder that we would require you to be as open as possible. That will really help us reach an efficient solution at the end of today's session. So, great. Would you like to tell us now why you came in here today? Yeah, sure. So, I'm president of Residence Association at Chelem. Chelem is a small town with a large beachfront. So traditionally, it was developed by the fishermen, but uh, gradually a small town developed. So in order to increase the tourism, hmm. the state, they allowed to have shacks at the beach. Okay. So uh, every year, they auction the license for running these shacks, and they are generally given only, they are given only to the residents of the state. So with time, as uh, as there was an increase in the popularity of the beach, as it was heavily marketed on social media, we saw that there is a boost in uh, tourists, both uh, domest uh, domestic as well as international tourists. They came in thousands. So uh, to make sure that there to make sure that there is a smooth flow of the whole process, the shacks were given uh, the permission to 
to run throughout the year except in monsoon season. So due to an increase in popularity, there was an increase in license fee, license fee for running the shacks. So okay. this led to an unhealthy uh, competition between the shack owners. So in order to attract more tourists, they tried to find out more innovative ways like uh, live music, karaoke, late night candle light dinners till 2 a.m. Mm. Apart from that, every other shack every day used to play loud music and late night parties are pretty rampant. So this okay. has caused inconvenience to the residents of Chelam Beach, most particularly who have their homes which is uh, closer to the beach. Uh, they are facing inconvenience due to uh, hazardous parking by the tourists uh, and other unscrupulous activities. But the most important is the sound pollution just caused by these loudspeakers which are played at these shacks. People who are the residents, residents of Chelam Beach, they are not able to sleep properly at night. The children, they are not able to study. For the same, they filed a number of complaints with the police as well as the panchayat. But they were playing a sort of blame game. The police, it was, uh, uh, you know, it was transferring the blame to panchayat by saying that they shouldn't have given license to the shacks in the first place. And the panchayat, they is uh, bl blaming the police for allowing to play such loudspeakers. But this is causing a uh, severe, uh, you know, this loud music causing inconvenience to us. It has a number of health issues. Also, the uh, thing is that we have a senior citizen's residential complex, which is uh, very close to the beach. Uh, and point is that such loud music, it can help a number of health related issues. It can cause a number of health related issues. So uh, how could the government, uh, as far as my knowledge is concerned, I know that uh, the law permits that loud music can be played till 10 p.m. But in our case, they're playing it till 2 a.m. And so how can law permit such a, such an action? It is It has been creating nuisance for us. How can they permit the loud music to play even till 10 p.m.? It is not, uh, it is like, it is creating a hindrance in a day-to-day -day routine. The children are not able to study. The adults are not able to uh, have their, it's like it's creating a hindrance into a daily day routine. They are not able to do their daily chores. So I would like to know if I, how can I like uh, raise an issue against this 10, uh, 10 p.m. permit as a 10 p.m. limit. At the same time, what can I do to make sure that the sound is stopped beyond that 10 p.m. Also, uh, we got to know that they are organizing an EDM music fest at the Chelam Beach for three days. So I need your help for the same. We got to know that your that your law firm it is uh, very much expertise in it has expertise in environmental law litigation. So we need your help. But we have actually a problem. Our association it stop. We don't have the fund. So if you can waive our fee. Right. Um, before we move to and telling providing you other information just to inform that I have my old parents back at home and we have a settlement nearby that plays music incessantly at night and it's really difficult because I do understand and it's a I do understand where you're coming from and I'm glad that you've taken up this course of coming up with the issue and trying to create a solution towards it so I'm really happy. Thank you for being so forthcoming, Prerna. Um, it certainly is great that you are acting just what an informed citizen should act like and you're taking up this matter in the best possible legal manner. So a lot has been said in the past few minutes. I would just like to quickly summarize everything that has been said so as to ensure that nothing is being misinterpreted or we aren't missing out on anything. So first of all, um, to increase tourism, uh, the government introduced shacks which were auctioned to residents. Um, thereafter, it led to a tourism boost and thereon, uh, post some time, decrease of license fee was done, which led to unhealthy Oh, right. Increase in the license fee. I'm extremely sorry for that. There was an increase in license fee which led to an early competition amongst uh, the local club owners and all of that. So there was live music being played, late night candlelight dinners were being organized, there were parties being done which essentially led to um, late night noise pollution. That's what you've informed us, right? So people have been facing lots of issues, um, starting from parking related issues there on the sound pollution, obviously. People have been facing issues with their sleep. Children are not being able to study. The police and panchayat have absolutely disregarded the issue. They are constantly blame shifting. Thereon, you also mentioned that um, there is constant hindrance in the day-to-day -day routine of the people involved. So essentially, you have brought forth three issues. Um, you're concerned about the 10 p.m. time limit 
and there on how could you possibly stop this sound pollution post the 10 pm time limit also moreover there is an edm music festival that is about to be organized for which you need guidance am i missing out on anything no. great all right before we move to suggesting some solutions we'll require some clarifications from you and that will be more helpful in understanding the case so um could you tell me the distance between the shack and the closest house nearby it uh, it's actually most of the houses are under the radius of 1 km okay within 1 km okay and uh, do you have the formal the official documents regarding you said that the auction of the um, was done only to the citizens so do you have official documents yeah, only to the residents of the state right yeah, so it was done by the state government yeah we can ask for the documents all right would you you mentioned that you have contacted the police as well as uh, the panchayat do you have any um, documentation of the formal communication that was done uh i don't think so we have it for the panchayat but we had filed a complaint with the police so we can get it from the record great that would be really helpful and uh, at any point as a president did you have any communication with those shack owners themselves no communication no oral communication like informal communication as I well i guess the residents must have uh, okay. talked to them but no it's not a sure yeah. uh, consensus all right and um, any notice that was sent to the state pollution control board if possible no. Not no. good. Okay. So I'm believing that the matters were taken only up to the local bodies, yeah. and not up to the state and the national bodies. Okay. All right. So you mentioned you've mentioned the sound pollution quite frequently. I'm assuming there must have been a damage as a sound level assessment done. No. There was none. No. All right. All right. Um. As per your understanding, how would you categorize the area as as commercial or residential or it's a mix of both it is precisely we can say uh it was actually primarily a residential area but there the shacks are growing so we can say it's both okay but mostly a residential area and the shacks have been uh, under compliance legal compliance yeah. except for the noise yeah. pollution aspect you mentioned that uh, there is an old age home nearby how close is it to these shacks uh It is. It's even the clo- uh, old age home is under the radius of one kilometer. Alright. Okay. And could you give me an estimate of when is the EDM music fest about to be? Uh, it is going to or it is going to be organized from twenty eighth to thirty first December. Okay. So it's pretty soon. Yeah. Alright. So you mentioned that people are facing health issues as well. is there uh, any increase in their medical expenses that you have documentation for yes certainly uh, i don't think so i have the documentation but i can ask them for it right that would be really helpful i mean the minutes we had about in spot of the day also um since you've mentioned that they have been playing music till 2 am has uh, there been any documented evidence regarding the same wherein you could have recorded any videos of them playing music past the Reasonable time limit that is 10 p.m. I can ask the residents on the street. Great. One time. Yeah, the wall was clear. The year. Um, at any point, did uh the police authorities let's say that an event is taking place right now wherein the music is being played till late at night? Was there any situation where you called on the police immediately and they came out to the um that precise location? No. No. Okay. So at no point it was stopped, even if the residents complained. Actually, uh, for a short time, uh, a few time back, we uh, the police actually uh, asked them to stop it, and they stopped it actually. Right. But it only happened for a short period of time. They started it again. Right, and the police didn't intervene there after. Oh, okay. Had the same been told to the police that they have restarted playing music again? Yes, the police is completely aware. Okay. So it's just an ignorant action on no. their. Okay. And uh, on behalf of the on matters of the panchayat, um, have they been considering the aspect that the fact that they've been given licenses, it's causing more harm than what they expected? So, so they're not. So even they are ignorant towards this issue. 
Are you aware of any monetary transaction taking place between the shack owners and the panchayat um, apart from the uh, official auctioning papers? No, I'm yeah. not aware of it. Thanks. So I'm assuming all these shacks are open spaces, there's no closed space that they might possibly have within their uh, desk. No, they are situated on the beach. Okay. Right. And uh, has there ever been a situation of public emergency at that point when the music was being played loudly? As of now, no. No. Okay. Nothing reported yet. Right. Where should I go? Was there any agreement that the shack owners had wherein a clause might be mentioned as to they need to comply to XYZ standards and uh, it being one of them that, you know, they need to take the permission from the authority just in case they're going to play music beyond the uh, extended time that is allowed? As far as my limited knowledge is concerned, they must have entered into an agreement with the state government because it was the state government who has been providing them the license right. and the shacks. Right. So uh, I don't have a copy of that agreement, but I can certainly ask for the same. Great. Right. But Could you uh, elaborate more upon this agreement with the state? Uh, if you have any information. Uh, so far, I have no information All right. on this one. Any? Any? All right, I believe we have certainly, certainly enough information to conclude that we have a few strengths and weaknesses in our case. First of all, uh, we are brought to the notice that there is a nursing home nearby catering to old people, right? And there has been no sound level assessment done. This acts as a disadvantage to our problem. However, we shall ensure that we will conduct a sound level assessment so as to ensure that we're able to check if they are meeting the compliance standards or not. Thereafter, uh, we're also uh, being told that health consequences were increasing. So there are medical bills documented which show that there has been an increase in medical expenses of the citizens that acts as a strength to us as well. Thereafter, you're telling us that you could also provide us video records of them playing music post 10 p.m. Great, that acts as a strength as well. And police intervention was done only once. Thereafter, there was no intervention. So this is certainly something we need to look about. And at last, you also mentioned that there was an agreement between state and the shack owners. Yeah. Right, so we'll have to look on that as well. Um, that being said, just to add uh, and to make it simplified for you, uh, why, why, why we are demanding an assessment is that basically the noise is calculated in terms of a unit called decibel. All right, so every, every according to the Indian provisions that we have that are pre-existing, our various in areas around the um, around the country are are uh, divided into zones. So you have an industrial zone, you have a commercial zone. So a commercial zone would typically mean a market or a mall. Then you have residential zones. So we have categories of that sort. And then uh, there's a limit of the amount of noise that can be created according to the decibel levels. So we need to check if that is in concurrence with that that is already caused, which the way um, has been told to us uh, we need to have an official record regarding the same. Uh, that being said, another aspect that I wanted to cover was the fact that the panchayats and the other um, police authorities have not been in compliance with what we have been demanding. So we do have a, a issue over there as well because we do not have the received support that we would require in order to take up the matter even better and understand it more faster. And uh, Another strength which I believe we should also consider is that there have been international reports as well which explain that there's effect of noise pollution can cause situations like hearing impairment or, you know, even the situation that you mentioned of students or like old age uh, parents. So uh, we rest assured on that aspect uh, we do have and uh, strong case and it's just a matter of ethical, uh, for, it's just a matter of ethical procedure that in order to create entertainment for yourself, you do not create a disturbance for the others around you. And uh, you need to take into consideration all of that as well. So we rest assured our provisions in India do cover aspects of those kind of nuisance that people might create. And at no point it can be caused at the uh, harm it, 
creates to another human being because everybody does have a right to life. That being said, I believe we can move to the forums and how we can approach the short term and the long term goals. So I'll make it simplified for you. Short term would be the ones that we can take immediate action and provide us temporary relief. And the long terms will be that eventually we can get up to those and shall be the main goals. So you didn't mention three issues, right? Okay. Regarding the 10 p.m. permit. We do have a strong case on that because a strong legal provision that says that night time from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. it's not allowed and thus that matter stands as it as is and we can demand an injunction since it is in contravention to the noise pollution prevention rules that we already have. So an injunction is basically an interim order from the court which will ask the shacks to stop such acts and um, in case they are found violating it there shall be legal action against them. Another would be uh, sending the notices to the State Pollution Control Board that we would require. And if required, we can move up the hierarchy if we do not find an adequate answer or response from them. And to the Panchayat and the police authorities, considering and intimating them that this is the final notice and we need you to take consideration. And all of this shall be um, attached with the official assessment report that we will have uh, because that will just make our case stronger and help understand them better because official records will add value to it, plus the documented evidence that you will give us. That being said, on the long terms, we can um, also, there's a possibility that we can consider the aspect of silent zones, which I do believe might be debatable considering a shack is more of an entertainment aspect. But uh, categorizing an area as mainly residential or commercial, because as per what you mentioned right now, it's a mix of both and that is affecting um, how the matters are being solved. So categorizing the areas of vicinity and further regarding the EDM music aspect that you have said, there can be a possibility of building a closed enclosed, you know, a closed um, auditorium or a, such kind of a space wherein, you know, you can play music up to late as compared to what you can do in an open space. So that could be a possibility because considering it's on 28 December, it's pretty soon. So a temporary closed, you know, enclosure that can be made, um, we believe that should be a temporary relief that we can go forward with. The silent zones that were mentioned, I believe, um, we can certainly ensure that the nursing home gets um, allocated a silent zone since uh, with the noise pollution rules 2000, it is mentioned that hospitals include nursing homes. So essentially what that would do is it would ensure that senior citizens don't have to face the consequences of the sound pollution being caused by shacks. So we can intimate the same to the shacks as well, as well as to the relevant authorities. So uh, regarding the forums that we would require you to take up, the first one would be that we go for a more cost and time effective forum and uh, we can take up uh, one of the alternate dispute resolution methods that could be mediation, wherein you have a third neutral party and that shall do the communication between you and the other parties, wherein you can explain the situation to them and hoping that um, they are able to come to a common consensus, considering that it's a two-way process throughout this whole uh, ev series of events that you have just told us. So it's a two-way process where both parties are benefiting. If that does not work, then litigation shall be an option that we shall take up. And we do have specialized tribunals like the National Green Tribunal. And we have a, for a method called the public interest litigation, wherein if you are concerned about some environmental issue that's been taking place or being personally aggrieved by it, that can be uh, solved via this forum. So regarding the 10 p.m. permit that is, con that is present and the music being played beyond that permit, that can be taken up in the PIL as well. So that is how you can take up. However, we do not want you to make a decision now. You can deliberate over the same and you're not bound by what we um, said, what we might, you know, tell you right now. Um, before we conclude, just to give you our business card, I shall be your first point of contact. If I'm not available at any point, you can always contact Chris. And so we rest assured we are there for you 24 seven. So do not hesitate to call. Um, these are a few agreements that we would require you to take, just like he mentioned, the beginning, the retainer agreement and the fee agreement. Uh, no need to fill it right now. So you can fill it later. Just to explain, today's was the first session, the introductory session. The second will be post, we have the documents in hand. And the third will be to finalize the course of action. 
However, it shall not be restricted because uh, depending upon the course we take up, we shall require more. It's a list of documents. I hope it was a great session. Do you have any questions for us? Paul Jai, thank you so much. Thank you, Brino. It was wonderful to meet you. We shall now begin with our post interview session. So, Chris, what do you think of today's session? I mean, the session was really great. The client was really forthcoming. Um, she ensured that we get all of the relevant information. However, there were certain aspects that I wish we could have deliberated more upon. The aspect of state agreements, since it is essentially a case where the local authorities as well as the state authorities have paid absolutely no regard to the consequences of what their agreements have been leading to. I believe we need to have a better discussion on that with the client as soon as possible. What do you believe? Yes, I believe we do require and um, those clarifications will be possible once we have the documents in right. hand. And um, to be fair, from what we're able to gauge in bioprelimary research, I do believe we do have a strong case at hand because um, the actions are definitely in violation to the existing provisions. Right. and. It's surprising that there's no action that's been taken in terms of these violations. There are certain penalties that are, you know, offered upon these uh, violators and by the police authorities and the panchayats have not been cooperating is another aspect we need to consider because um, pragmatically they should be helping us with the compliance. Right. So we require a check regarding these two bonnies as well. Right. We certainly do. Moreover, I believe there are certain more um, documents that we need to take a look at as well as laws. Right. Moreover, the Air Act as well comes into the picture since air pollutants includes noise pollution. Right. So I believe we need to take a look at the, uh, the Air Act provisions as well. Do you think we should be focusing on right now? So essentially in those aspects, uh, we do have, you know, so all actions are subject to reasonable restrictions that need to be there. Sorry. So that is more famously called in the constitution as public order, according to the public order, morality and health. Right. So uh, we believe those aspects need to be considered into this. And we do have a lot of legal precedents in these cases. Like there was a case of loudspeakers and uh, there was a case of, um, if I'm not wrong, Church of God versus. Right. Uh, so that covered aspects and not only at the cost of religion, can you create so much noise pollution that it affects the right to life of other human beings? Certainly. Moreover, I believe, first of all, we need to contact um, relevant authorities that could possibly conduct sound assessment surveys right. so as to ensure that we obtain the sound levels that are being um, generated by these shacks so as to ensure that they are uh, contravening the compliance standards that have been set already. Moreover, I believe we should also be approaching pollution com uh, control committees. Right. They should be intimidated, intimidated about the same, the, le the legalities of the actions of the shack owners. True, and um, we briefly touched upon this aspect, but she mentioned that earlier the uh, licenses were only given to the citizens, the right. residents, and then it moved to providing it to other people as well. Right. Uh, and that led to an increase in the license fee. We need agreements and we need to understand the objective behind doing so, and if there's any way we can regulate that aspect, because the fact that the increase in license fee led to the increased competition, and that increased competition led to uh, the shack owners, you know, moving towards developing different ways in order to gain more popularity. And that's how this loudspeaker issue has propped up. So if we can move towards, uh, you know, understand more about the license fee uh, transition, right. that shall be better as well. You're certainly right on that aspect. Moreover, I believe that we should certainly get on to filing an injunction to ensure that the senior citizens don't have to face the consequences of the actions of the shack, because apparently the more health consequences that citizens face are essentially senior citizens. So to ensure that there are no more medical expenses that they have to bear, um, especially at this age, we have to ensure that there is no medium uh, that's left for us to cover. Moreover, the fact that the, the client mentioned that there is a situation of financial crunch in the world, I believe we should take up this case pro bono, since this is essentially a fight for the rights of the citizens. 
Yes, we can um, in the next session approach the client more deliberately about this issue and you know, have a more open talk regarding the same. Right. Um, that being said, another aspect, what do you think about the forums that we just mentioned to them? And um, how do you think the other party would respond to them? Right. So I believe, first of all, get, sitting down with the ADM Music Festival owners and intimating them about the possible consequences of their actions right. and the possible remedies that they could have. Hmm. I believe we should get on to that first since the ADM Festival is approaching and it's really soon. Sure. So we should first ensure that the consequences of that aren't being faced by anyone. I believe I will get in touch with them first to okay. ensure that nothing of that sort happens and if at all they want to do something along the lines of an EDM music festival that is done in an enclosed space. Yes, and um, I do believe that even the opposite party will agree to it considering that um, a lot of their investments are also involved and considering it's in the final stage, right. there's no way you can you know, back forward to you know go back to it. Right. So what do you think our course of action should be regarding the work division now? I have mentioned that I'll get in touch with the investigating authorities. Right. Thereafter, I'll get on with drafting a legal notice that we could potentially send to the National Pollution Control Board, um, informing them about the details of the incidents that have been taking place, post obtaining the documents, obviously, since we have to ensure that we have a strong case at hand and the National Pollution Control Board is able to essentially ensure that the regulations they have set are met. All right. And um, another thing that we can also take the course of and as attorneys we need to discuss is that under Article 133 and the Section 133 of the CRPC does cover that the uh, district magistrate can give an, uh, you know, an order requiring the person who is causing nu nuisance to restrain from doing so. Right. So that could be the method that we take up for the purposes regarding the injunction as well. And uh, not only do we have the noise pollution and the air pollution and the prevention control acts involved, but we also have the Environment Protection Act, which I believe is an umbrella regarding the same. Right. And under Article 6P of the same, you have the uh, you know, exact decibel amounts that can be uh, you know, emitted in terms of the noise that is created in that particular zone of that area. So I do believe that we do have a strong case, you know, better understanding once we have met the client and an even better understanding once we have the documents ready. And uh, yes, so I will get in touch with the client, Prerna, and once I'll keep, I'll make sure that I have the recent updates with her. Right. And uh, if there are any other information that she wants to share with us, I shall ensure that we have that. And at the same time, I will uh, start with formation of the notices and you know, drafting the notices regarding the injunctions and the other notices that we ought to send right. uh, depending upon what the client finally accepts to and uh, hopefully she'll get back in, with an answer to us. All right. So and let's yes. get on with the preliminary research, I guess. Yes, we and can begin with the research. Are you free at 5 p.m. tomorrow? Yes, I am. Let's meet then then. All right. All right. Thank you. It's a great session. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.